First of all, he honey washed it. Oh, you mean, uh, Machpialuta Gonier Machiapi. Uh, my name is Jermaine Red Cloud Gonier. Uh, like Charlie said, my family has been doing this for uh, generations. This quail work is what we call an ancient artwork. This quail work has been here before the beadwork. It has been with our people from the beginning of our people. It had come to a, a lady, the spirits told her what it was, uh, what she could do with it, and then it grew from there. There is four different types of quail work, as uh, you probably know. There's the wrap down quail work that you see here in front of you and what you're going to be learning today. Then there's also what we call the strung up, where you're going to utilize the quails as like a tube or like a bone to put beads on it. Then there's the two different kinds of tack down quail work that we have, the one that sits up and down and then the one that goes kind of sideways like that so there's two there's four all together of the quail work styles my family <clears throat> we uh learned this style well we know all the styles but we use this style because it's much quicker and um we were able to like charlie said we were able to sell it and by selling it we were able to feed our children i myself have been doing this quail work for over half my life I first uh, was taught how to string up the quails to make chokers. Before I could go play, I would have to string up five or six chokers before I could go play. All that time as a kid, I didn't know that there was money involved in this and this is what was paying for my shoes, my jacket or whatever it may be, even groceries for the table. So I just thought it was a daily chore. And as I got older, then they uh, taught me this style, how to do the wrap down quail work. So I started that and through that I was able to buy my own clothing, be able to pay for the electricity, pay for food and when I started having children I was able to pay for their way in life too. So this quail work has helped me throughout my whole life as far as financially and able to take care of myself and my family. And the other thing that this quail work does like Charlie explained to us it's a meditation. Um, if those of you that know how to do the um, bead work, you sit there patiently and you're stringing one bead up, boom, boom, you know. And us guys, we're wrapping one quail at a time. And as we're sitting there, we're thinking of various things, you know. We might even be in prayer as we're sitting there. And, you know, um, like this crown that sits here, I made this for my daughter. I made this for her when she was out dancing and she was achieving all these different titles that she was holding in the powwow world. So I wanted her to have something unique. I wanted her to have some kind of protection while she's out there in that powwow circle. Because those of you that are in the powwow circle, you know that there's a lot of wona wheezy that goes in there too. So I wanted her to be protected and uh, nothing to hinder onto her and for her to go and thrive. So I was sitting there, as I was sitting there, this, this pattern itself came to me. This is its own unique pattern. You will not see this pattern again anywhere. First, I, I figured she needs that medicine well, you know, in the four directions to keep her centered and to keep her, you know, going in life in a circular motion that we all know our heritage um, explains to us and then there's the various uh, designs that are in here they all mean something you know it depends upon the person that's doing this quail work for me as I was sitting there these the this flower pattern that sits here that's the we chakbi, the star I wanted the, our ancestors to watch over her in that circle and then I made it yellow <clears throat> even though in our culture the yellow represents well now easy but i wanted it yellow so that way her life remains shining and bright and that there always be light wherever she might walk wherever she might dance so there was a lot of meaning and a lot of prayer into this um crown that i had made for her Later on, she uh, became the um, junior miss Oglala Lakota Nation, and she carried that title for a year. Those things there are, um, I believe, are the way that uh, this helped her. And um, she herself is a artist. She does the porcupine quail work, and she likes to bead, but she's particular with the beadwork. 
<clears throat> so this again it helps us to meditate as we're sitting there and we might be thinking of our loved ones we might be thinking of the future we might be thinking of the now and then it helps us to recenter ourselves our own selves for that day so i might have been having a bad day but i come home and i sit down to my quote work by the time i'm done with my quote work i'm calm i'm cool i'm all right again to move about in the world again and um my, I come from a very big family. I come from the Red Cloud family down to the old Sundance grounds and it's been a generational thing. My uh, grandmother learned it from her mother and her mother and so forth. So my grandmother, my mother, myself and now my children are doing this here artwork. Back in the day it was just medicine wheels and, and uh, bracelets. But as we were sitting there doing our quote work, various patterns and designs come to us so right away, we'll put those patterns and those designs down onto our rawhide. And each one of these earrings, they're hand cut. They're not cut by a machine. They're not cut by nothing. They're utilize, you cut them and they're, you, you cut them with an X-Acto blade. So we sit there with all of our stuff around us. We sit there with our rawhide, our marking pins, our patterns, our cutting board, our cutter, our scissors, and our quails. Like I told Charlie, I said, There's a, this is a process. I said, it's just not boom, boom. I said, hey. and he knows it too, but I just had to explain my side of it. I said, you got to go out and you got to hunt the porcupine. You hunt that porcupine, you bring that porcupine back, you got to let it sit a couple of days. By then, that porcupine's pretty well rotted and he's kind of smelling like. You take off that pesha, the guard hair. Then if it's winter time like now, you have to take off that winter coat. And then you actually see the porcupines onto the porcupine itself, the pahi in the Lakota language. And you sit there and you have to pluck them off by bunches by bunches. There's no easy way around it. A couple of my friends said they threw a sock on there and pulled that off, but they still had to pluck the porcupine quails off the sock. So. I see there's no easy way to do it. You have to, by the bunches, pick it off of there. <clears throat> so during this time, this March powwow time, our family's very busy doing this whole process. We go out, we hunt, bring the porcupine back, do the, the guard hair, the winter coat, then the quails themselves, the actual quails that come off. And then the porcupine, he <laughs> hates water. So these, part, these quails are never clean because the porcupine, he hates it. Because when, as you all know, with your quails, when they got wet, they got heavier. So if that porcupine got in water, he's going to sink to the bottom because he's full of water from these quails. So <clears throat> that's why he never takes a bath and that's why the quails are dirty. And then there's two different kinds of porcupine. Uh, I, I could see here, this is the uh, black tipped porcupine. And then there's a brown tipped porcupine. So there's two different kinds of porcupines out there in the world. A lot of people believe that this porcupine, when he whacks his tail, those quails are gonna go flying. That's not so. Not here on this turtle island. In Africa, that's true. The porcupine does shoot his quails, but not here on America. <clears throat> so, so once that process is done, you're done washing your quails, then the next step is you get to dye those quails. And uh, Charlie dyed, I think, like four colors, and it took him all day. I dye seven to eight colors myself, my family. We dye the basic yellow, orange, red, maroon, black, blue, sky blue, lime green, pink, purple. You know, we dye all those. And we pick up our dyes throughout the year. Um, we pick up some of our dyes during the Easter time. Um, we use the RIT dye and we also use food coloring dye. So <clears throat> we pick, we, as we're gathering those and we're doing our quail work, then we start dyeing them. And each, each one gets dyed just like how you guys done it. You know, you got to wash it, then get your waters ready. Then you put the quails in there and you stand there and you flip them. You turn them over, making sure that the quails are getting evenly colored. Once that's done, you pull them out and you rinse them off. And then maybe even rinse them off again. And then you set them out to dry. You gobble them, spreading them all over. 
<clears throat> once that process is done, those quills have to be dry. Because next, you're going to go back through here and you're going to, what we call sorting. You're going to sort through the size that you're going to use. There's the real thin stuff, then the middle stuff, and then the fat, the fatter quills. The bigger quills we use on our bracelets, <clears throat> you know, to cover more space there. The smaller quills we utilize for our earrings to make them a little bit more intricate and um, put a little more detail into those designs. So we have to pick through each one of those colors, sorting them out. I hate that process myself. I like the, the, the whole dyeing and the cutting, but I hate the sorting the quills. <clears throat> so once that process is done, you have them sorted. Then you jump back over here to marking down your patterns onto the various rawhides. Like I said, each one of these earrings are cut, hand cut using an X-Acto blade. We have a board that sits there and we sit there and we start cutting. That process, all depending on how, how much you marked, could take a day, maybe even two days. Once it's punched out and it's all ready to go, then you can actually sit down and do the wrapping part. That's the, to me the easy part. Because you have everything in front of you set to go. You start wrapping and like I said, you're sitting there, you're meditating, you're praying, you're thinking, and you're putting down the various designs in our earrings, in our bracelets, in our keychains. We make, we quell just about anything that can be quelled. We make necklaces, hat bands, double row bracelets, triple row, you know, and there's has been a time or two where we make the strike light bag and the knife sheet. But a lot of people don't want to pay that price for that one. They think it's easy. And as you all well know now, it, that's not an easy process to make a big project. Our family has made various big projects. Um, we have one of them dis on display down to Red Cloud. It's that horse blanket. That one there is we just quelled a bunch of strips that our grandmother created to design in. All of us uh, quail workers all had a section in that, so it was a family project. <clears throat> My uh, grandparents, like uh, Charlie said, they all established our, our uh, mark in the world. Red Cloud Quail Work is known throughout this whole Turtle Island. So, um, like I said, I come from a very big family. My grandmother and my grandfather had 10 children. From that children, there's us grandchildren, and then now we have children. And there's uh, my children now even have children. So my mom has Isam Takoja. So we hand it down each time, generation to generation. One of the things that my grandparents said was, um, you can't teach nobody how to do this. So I, I kind of had a, came to that point, and then I was like, you know, well, I'm gonna go and show these people um, what we're about, what it consists of, because like I said, it's an ancient artwork and it's also a dying artwork. There's not too many that do it besides the Red Cloud family. There's three families here on the reservation that do it. There's the Red Clouds, the Red Bears, and the New Holies. And I don't know how active the New Holies are, but they have a documentary and I would suggest that you guys to find that and watch it. I'm pretty sure the library has it in, in their archive. Because it's a real nice documentary that family shows the whole beginning process of what I just now explained. <clears throat> so, um, like when we're sitting there and we're, we're thinking, as you can see in this particular necklace, we can even tell a story. Now he's asked, my aunt made this particular piece. This is a moon necklace. We're just gonna have to put the stringing, string quails up on this side. So I said, well, auntie, I said to me, what's the story behind here? Cause they're gonna ask me this when I'm at March Pawa. She said, well, she said, I was sitting there, she said, and of course we know what the feathers are you know we come from the eagle people she said that's their protection she said and then these these here little steps that's their steps in life she said then you have your evening star and your morning star to keep you in balance throughout your life so i said oh cool all right i said so we're gonna call that we chalk huh she said yeah 
That sounds good. So we, we name our pieces too, you know, we get so close to them, we, we start naming our pieces and coming up with stories and stuff like that. This other other particular pattern we have in this earring here, as you can see, this is the Paha Sapa, the Black Hills. As Sioux people, we always put that little trademark in our in our quail work, in our bead work. You see it throughout the whole powwow circuit there. So um, that's kind of my story. And um, when I learned this, my grandmother, she said, don't forget, she said, that grandmother. So always be thankful to the grandmother who sits in the um, Badlands. Because the story is that at the beginning of our time, there was the Onchi who done this porcupine quail work. She's making a big, beautiful quail work blanket, the tack down. She's sitting out there in the Badlands and they say when she's done with that blanket, our time is now done here. So she tacks down quail work onto that there beautiful blanket. And then when she stands up to stir her soup or turn her quails that she might be dying, her um, shunka, her dog, will come and he'll start to unravel it. Instead of getting mad at the, the shunka, you know, she'll just sit back down and she'll start tacking down her quails again. So I think about that story as I'm doing this in here. To me, that's telling me you need to have patience for one, you know, patience in life with your children, with yourself, with your job, whatever it may be that you're doing. Everything takes patience. That's what this quail work is too, is patience. <clears throat> so um, that's kind of my story and where I come from. And if you guys have any questions, I'm open to any. Jenny? Have any questions? No? Not yet. Not yet? So I'm here today to tell you my story and to explain a little bit of this ancient artwork and to also help you guys to catch this tacky, this wrapping it down. This rawhide, there's even a certain way that we mark it too. <clears throat> we mark it on the smooth side and then for a bracelet would be uh, marking it this way as you can see it wants to turn this way so that's the way we would be marking it just like charlie was cutting those strips i think it was from this one or one of these ones so we would start marking it and we would always keep it in that their shape so when we turn it into that bracelet it has that perfect ground shape to it so with that, if you have your quails, you can pull them out and you guys got to pick through a little bit of them. I got a question on that. Okay, what side do you wrap? What side does your knot go? Does it go on a slick side or the rough side? Your um, patterns would go on the slick side. Your, where you're going to tie each one together goes on your rough side. That's how that goes. So even, so when Charlie marked this one, then where these markings are, that's where those little knots tying together is going to be. And then on this side is where your quail work's gonna lay flat. And if you get into the rhythm of putting in patterns, designs, then that's where they would go. Good question there, Charlie. So, um. You have if you have your quails, you can pull them out. If you're if you don't have them, there is some here. There's some. You can explain the water and the bowls and okay. Um, there's some paper towels, yeah. So once you have your quails, the size that you're going to utilize, then you're going to get your your quails wet because your quails need to be wet in order for it to bend to the shape that we're going to be as we're going to lay them flat long time ago the women used to put them in their mouth but modern technology now we can you put our quails into bowls pour the water in there let them get soft once they get soft then we can start tying them down and it's always good to have either a cloth or a paper towel when you pull the quails out of the water you put them on there 
So that way it doesn't always sit in a puddle of water right here and it helps dry that excess water off onto the cloth so it doesn't get onto the rawhide. Because the rawhide, if it gets too wet, it's going to um, gonna lose its shape and it's gonna go softer because this was once skin, you know. So it needs to, you need to keep your dry, your quails a little bit dry. So that's what the paper towels about are your cloth. You put it on there to dry off the excess water and then we start putting it onto the rawhide. So um, I'll take Charlie's, Charlie's quails that he has. Us guys, we uh, put our quails in um, trays, in the old um, school trays, so that way we have all of our various colors, because we keep our colors sorted. So that way when we get to a certain color, it's, it's there. It takes a little time to um, for them to get soft. So while they're getting soft, then we always figure out what it is that we're going to um, wrap. Because like I said, we have all of our stuff cut out there. We have medicine wheels, earrings, bracelets. Someone might be doing hat bands. <clears throat> with a with a strip, you could even you know make a keychain too. You know, you can make a, um, a barrette strip too. Or like I showed you earlier, a bracelet. And there's also what we call loop earrings. That was once a, just a strip that was wrapped. We have, a, these are what we call slats right here. And we also have our slats with the strung up quails at the bottom so this is really the first what we first learned how to do in our family like i said we do chokers i used to pretty soon i got so good i used to do about seven of them a day so charlie um he had a good idea here he went and got a ruler and he got made strips of the leather <clears throat> So you get your quail and you first lay it down. To me it would be like this. Like I said, the slick side on the outside here. The rough side in the middle here. And then you start to tie them down. You first lay your quail down. And the black tip's always on top. Then one, the bottom, gets folded. And then the top. So it pretty much sits like that. Then you pull this one down. And it goes around. <clears throat> and then you tie your next one in. This would be the black tip here. Goes down. And then you pull it down as far as that black tip. Then here. And then here. Holding it. And then again you go. Now at this point you would start cutting these the tips. And the bottom. So that way, on this side, your quails will remain flat. And they flatten as they go, so you don't always have to turn around and flatten them, they flatten as they go. <coughs> and most quails, they'll do two wraps. If you have real long quails, they're going to give you three wraps on there. Again, you just lay it down, the black tip, the bottom. Pull this black tip down. The bottom sits on top of that black tip. Then you pull your quilt. So as you can see, I'm mainly using these three fingers during that whole process. Your thumb, he gets a little workout, your thumb. So again, your black tip, your bottom goes down, 
black tip comes this way. The bottom on top of the black tip. And you pull your coil. And meanwhile, you just keep you just come on to this side and you're making sure that they're all sitting there side by side. There's not too much space. And if there is, then you just move them around a little bit. And then you just keep on going. You want me to quell this whole ruler here? No. Oh. As long as you show, you show them that part and then they can see it. And then when they, when they get started, then you <laughs> So again, the black tip, pull it down. The bottom sits on top of the black tip. So let's say we're going to end this. <clears throat> and a lot of people, they, they think we use, we use glue. Yeah, you can use glue if you want to. But that would be at the very end of your whole project. So once you have your quill secure on there, you just lay your string like that with a little loop on one end there. And then you wrap that string in there once that's... Then you take this loop of this the sinew, and it's best to use sinew or either wax string because you're going to need that to help pull this, this quail through there. And then there's its end. So there was no glue in that whole process there. And then let's say something was wrong, so then you just take that tip that you just now secured in there and you take it off. Because it untwines just as easy as you twine it on there. Okay. By now my quills are probably ready. Yep. Your quills are ready when they're soft. So where do you want me to? I'll move over here. Okay, yeah. If you want to. <clears throat> let's, let's move, let's take this table and just push it right there and then you can stand, come right up here, you can stand up here and look and see how the she does that and then you can, then when you finish with that then you can get your little bucket and you can restart it and see. We use the <clears throat> smaller, the smaller uh, scissors that there is because it needs to get in there and cut that <clears throat> tip. So it's again the beginning. The difference? Can you show the difference with, with the short ones and the skinny ones? And yeah, you would, as you're sort, sitting there sorting through your quails, then you're gonna wanna get the longer ones. Because these short ones, they're not going to be able to do anything. This particular one and the width of it would be used for um, stringing up a pair of earrings or finishing your necklace. That one too. You know, that's why <clears throat> we say we sort through our quails. So the skinnier the quail is, the more intricate your work is going to be. But we, we usually tell our children to to pick the longer ones so that way they can get used to actually just putting the quails down onto rawhide. And when a quail kind of looks like it's all bent up, then we're going to try it to see if it breaks. If it breaks, we just throw it away. If not, then we put it with our, our quails that we're going to use. With the tack down, quail work, you pretty much can use every one of these quails if you were tacking it down. Because like I said, that style there, you um, it's not like this, you're wrapping it onto something. So once again, there's that black tip, he sits on top. This is the bottom, the black tip goes on top. You're gonna pull it down to where that black tip is there's that first, the bottom one goes down, 
the black tip comes over so you have it on to that rawhide and you hold it on hold on to it with your your thumb and your pointing finger and you just pull this one down so there I go there's the beginning <coughs> that's where your small scissors are your cutter is going to come in hand and it's going to cut that bottom one off and cut that tip off so if you don't want those laying around in your house I strongly suggest you always cut them onto your your cloth that you might have and then we take that bottom one and we're gonna put it down there's that black tip pointing at me I'm gonna bend that black tip over and there goes that bottom one so I have it hooked on there and I pull it down check it and see as you can see as I'm quelling it it's making its own self flat a lot of people believe that the women when their those quells are in their mouth they're making them flat it flattens itself and it stays flat as long as you cut these tips off if you don't cut these tips off the air will go back into there and then they'll puff back out so there's that and then you again lay your quail down so it's holding there then you take the black tip and bend it and this one sits right on top of it and as you can see you actually don't really need long fingernails to do this and it doesn't matter how skinny or fat your fingers may be I have brothers that do this on a daily basis my brother likes to uh, hang out down to uh, Big Bats that's Christopher he does this porcupine quail work to take care of his family If it's a little longer and you see that it can't go another wrap then you would just leave it you would just leave it and you lay down your next quill but you don't cut it though you just wrap around it huh? yep you cut it after after always check it and yeah, it's looking good and you pull it down like I said to the black and over so it's on top you would want to cut it after because if you cut it before you might lose grip of it because mm -hmm. if you lose grip of it going to start to untwine but don't worry you can always tie it all back up again that's what you're doing here to me it reminds me of knitting if those of you that ever knit it or seen your grandma sitting there knitting I haven't done that for a while <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If you space it, like I said, you could just push it over. It moves. While it's wet, it will move. But once it dries, it's going to pretty much stay. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna 
put it on Facebook. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. All right. Can I take all your pictures and put it on Facebook? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I'm just going to say, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say, look, at this is what the clothing workshop was about. Mm -hmm. you, you missed out your extra credit, hey. Yep. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll put in here I'll put an easy pattern for you for uh, you to learn how to do the <clears throat> outside of this. We call this the pattern I'm going to show you. We call it the <laughs> SOS because it's just dot 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 dot. Mm -hmm. And each one of you, you're, you're going to have your own little style too. So when I see quail work, I look at it right away to see which artist is that created that is. So even though we come from the same family, we have our own unique way of doing, doing it, you know. Some of us might like... Um, to just do earrings, some of us might just like bracelets or hat bands, you know, keeping it simple. When you're going to <clears throat> put your pattern in on your outside of the quail work, you cut both ends. In this particular quail, you are going to flatten it. And then you're going to set it down. You're going to put one quail gonna start weaving. I'm gonna bring it so far down like that. Then lay it down. And then there it is. There's our first dot. There's our oh, first SOS there. It, it gets easier with um, time and the more that you do it the better you get at it and pretty soon you're um, coming up with your your own unique things ideas earrings so when you're doing this too <clears throat> and, and you, you may get a whole big bag of quills but you're going to use probably what a third of them yep so once you put that bar down, then you gotta bring that quill up again. Because you're weaving it. Yep, you're weaving it. So there's my other dot. So sometimes you even <clears throat> have to uh, cut off a big piece because it can't be wrapped again. Third dot. So you could even hold your quill on this side while you're getting this one ready again. Let me see if we could go one more. Yep, he can. even make sure that it sits right in the middle all you have to do is adjust adjust them adjust that coil that you're easy and she's making it look easy because dots 
years of experience. Remember the first day we were doing this? Uh -huh. Thumbs, sore thumbs, sore this, sore that. I think I'm still at the first day. <laughs> <laughs> but so that's why we're here. You know, we, we only have like a little bit of time in class and all of that stuff, but we bring here in on a Saturday so that you guys can get proficient at this. Yeah. You can practice it and you forget about having to wash clothes today and go shopping at go Walmart. Go shopping, you stay away, you know, stay and do some things that you know, get your mind off different things you can. Your thumb's probably sore because in your everyday life, you, you really don't use your thumb all all that much. So now we're we're done with our dot. So all we do is we cut this off. The longer the quail, like I said earlier, it's gonna cover more. So there's one, two, three, four wraps, that one quail just now. So as you're sorting through your quails, I would go for those long quails, no matter what width they may be. I'm running out of clouds here. We do um, sit there though in our homes when we're making this quail work and we do put quails in, in our mouth. <clears throat> so that way we're not continuously always going back and forth here. We're pulling them straight out of our mouth. But. I'm not going to do that today. She don't trust my washing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Where's my string I have here? Your string can get oh, string easily, easily there it is. <clears throat> can get easily lost within those quells there. And like I said, we usually use sinew because the sinew has its own little wax and it helps to pull that quail through much easier. So we even uh, use the, the dental floss too. That's what it's all about. It's nice and beautiful. Yeah, it, like I said, it flattens itself as, as you're moving along there. You just gotta continuously cut those tips throughout your process there. If you sit down thinking these quails are gonna stab you and hurt you, I can guarantee you they will. Just try not to think about that part basically become friends with those quails. Yeah. If you, just like me, if you think I'm gonna hurt you, I'm gonna hurt you. Yeah, exactly. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to brush your <laughs> So, back home, when, when we're all, when we're getting ready, we um, get our porcupine quails and you want it like that? We um, 
Gonna work? Got a lot of them. We, right. we spill them out good. onto our this table. Is, you want it that big? I'm gonna do this for you. This, like I said earlier, this is the part I, to me, is a tedious task. I sit there and I start picking through them, picking out the size that I want to use for whatever project it it might be that I'm going to work on. It saves um saves you time and it kind of organization <coughs> to your project that you're working on rather it's a hat band, earrings, bracelet, a double wave. A double wave? Yeah that's what that one particular bracelet over there is a double oh. double wave there. Jenny, that's Jenny's gold, so. Not today, though. Not today, <laughs> but that's. And as you're sorting through them and you're pulling, if you're pulling those broken ones, just throw them away. They're, they're not in good in any, any way at all. And the longer, the better, right? Yep, the longer, the better. You get one that's like this short, do you just throw that away? Yeah, just throw that away. It's not going to be able to be used for anything. So really thin ones like that, you could use them for earrings? Mm -mm. You can't really do much with them. Mm -mm. You might be able to use it as a weaver, the one that you would weave a, a design with. Mm -hmm. You'd be able to use it for that, but as far as wrapping, no. What's the Lakota word for patience? Wachinkunka. Hmm? Wachinkunka. So you're going to take this, because that's going to go right there like that, see? I already put the punch holes in her for her. She, she wants to make a bracelet. Okay. So, what, I'm, what you're going to do is you're going to have to figure out what kind, what kind of design you're going to go through, and then you're going to have to <coughs> check this in the middle right here. So your design is going to sit in this middle right here, okay? You're going, to, you're going to pull up to there and then you're going to start your design, whatever you're going to do. You're going to go that far and then you're going to close it back down to that end. And we'll, we'll see that you get it done in a half hour. <laughs> so while you're sitting at, sitting at home or um, even in <coughs> class, I um, would strongly suggest that you spill out your your quails in front of you and um, go through it and pick out your ones you're going to um, utilize. That way, it, you're wrapping. You would be able to just sit there and each quail that you're going to pull out of your bowl and put on your cloth, you're going to be able to use it. We're throwing them all in the bowl. You're still doing what I'm doing. But and they're, they're, they're wet, wet and they're sticking to your fingers. Yeah. So, <laughs> so when they're dry, like how these ones are, you you just sit there and you you um sort through it real real quick and mm -hmm. grab out of there the ones that you have. <clears throat> then back home and we we go through like what I just now went through. This would go into another bowl or another bag because it got went through. Mm -hmm. well, let me just put it back in there. Or honey, There's, I got bags right okay. Give me that. So I pulled some of them up. Alright, are you ready? Are you ready? I'm just bending it to the shape because it's going to go this way. You always hide these markings here. Okay, I'll bend this tag in this way.
this one okay, you're holding it. so they okay. have to intertwine right here before it can even go around long quest.
So you always start with the black tip, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Black tip points up. Right. And then it folds over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why you don't cut the tip because you kind of need it till after you're done putting it on to the rawhide itself. So you're basically just using these two and these two. You have to work together as a team. Ready for another quail. We need a when you when you do the beginning, always use a, a extra long one. Okay. Is that too short? Yeah, that one's kind of. Okay. So find an extra long. There's one right here. Okay. It's easier to hold it this way, Jenny. Oh, and then come that way? Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay, so here's you. I knew how to do it Wednesday. Yeah. Up. Okay. Over. Over. Yeah, yeah. And then swing back. Then swing back. Then you bring that one to the and down there you go all right then there that's as far as that quail is going to go so you're going to have to hook one got to hook a new one on there <coughs> This way, right? Yep. 
Okay, so this part. Yep. Supposed to be like that. Just, you just gotta grab this one <laughs> under here. Okay. So this is you. You got it right here. You're taking a coil. That's right. Down. Over. So see, you're still holding on to that first coil you put down. So then you have three for a second. Oh, yeah. Yep. For this way. Yeah. Just like that. Don't want to. So, yep. So you have two. Now you have three quails you're holding down. Mm -hmm. Okay. There you go. Okay. Thank you. A long time ago, the <clears throat> the quails, the dye that they used to use would be like the choke cherries, the sunflower, various uh, roots and um, leaves, and they would <clears throat> utilize the sunlight. You know, the the water is warming up through the sunlight, and they're putting those things in the water so that the sun's warming up that water and pulling that color out of whatever it may be then you put, throw put your quails inside of there like sun tea yeah you wow. let move them around and stuff and pretty soon that color is soaking on to the quail and you get it to the color that you like and then you pull it out of the water and then you let it dry mm. so in our museums and stuff the real older pieces you'll see that they're more of a pastel lighter color because that's what they used was various roots and berries and choke cherries like i mentioned so we wanted to do that at one time when our grandma was here so we made those colors and they're very beautiful pretty pastel colors you got it Okay. Uh, don't get frustrated. Yeah, I have some baked quails. Let's. I just think that it's a tea. Gotta make that. Tea, little tea. This one comes down. Pull it down a little bit. This one. This one has to jump on its back. There. There. Maybe it might go one more time. It did. Okay. Guys, we, we would use a cutter and we would just cut it and then our scissors would snip that tip. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, the tea. And over. Black tip down. Tail's got to jump on top of the black tips. See, as I was moving it, my finger was already flattening it on this side. So if you just take this, if you react with it, don't, don't get so there shook up go. on it. You take that and put it up there. Put that right there. See, so then you can press cross. This hand. Hold it. That the down. other hand's going to go get right a quail. Get a quail. And then you can bring this around. Make that. See? 
down, making that and with tea. That, if you bring that around again, it's going to tie into that come one. Down. Yeah. Oops, that come down. Oops, that too short. Mm. I see. It. Okay. So now we're going to take this one. Okay. And you see, because this is, this right here is angled. Remember, it, you, you the forgot tail to is piggyback going that way. Uh -huh. Okay. So you take this. So here, you made your T perfect. And you angle it. This thumb she has to hold it. She for didn't. You. It looked like she put hers in straight. Uh -huh. But when she went, she pulled it tight. When she pulled okay, it this so way, it angled it. So, so you can you start right this here hand. with an angle. You just put that underneath right there. Hold that. And this hand's going to okay. pull this one. You just kind of angle it. Because when you this angle this, gonna now you're going to leave room in here. This hand's okay, going to pull this coil down. It's angled right there. And when you pull this down right there, watch when you pull this back over, look at it, it fits right Perfect. in that open space right there. Okay, now see? that hand's going to hold and it. And you go around, cut up. And, and see now, when you pull that, see that, it's, it's like it's twisted. So when you pull this right here, it pulls this one tighter. And then so you keep going. And you come, come around. Okay. So now we're right there. Okay. Okay. Make your tea. This is going right there. Mm -hmm. It's going that way again. So you take this and you put it right here. You see there's a little angle. You see? Mm -hmm. Now, see this one's coming down right there. Good. Okay. See? Yeah. And this one here is coming down. Hold that, have that hold thumb it hold it and piggyback it on there. Like there you this. go. Now have that thumb that's hold that. As you over have that tied, and we'll pull it a little bit. Right. Mm -hmm. Pull your quilt just a little bit. Now. There you that. go. All right. It's just like wrapping it. That's all it is. Okay. It's just that so much time because that one is really short. Yeah. Okay. You wrap it this way. Yeah. Not the tail's going to be that way. If you wrap it okay. this way, the tail yeah. is going to be this way. Okay. So they say there's a left-handed turn here. and a right-handed turn. And then just around. So you okay. just go like that. Yeah. Bring that like that. down. Yeah. Like right. that. Yeah. See, it's just like that. Looks like you just put the unit around it. This one's got it. <laughs> That green won't stay. Okay. All right, green, you need to stay in your place. T down. Black over. Piggyback. Look at that. Look at that. Now what I want to do is for, because everybody's closing up shop and all of that good stuff now, I'd like to thank all of you who came and I'd like to thank Jermaine for coming over and putting on this workshop for us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And, and, it's, and it gives us a Instead of hearing how you do it from me, you have you heard it done from somebody else too, so you know what you what it's all about. Okay, and again, thank you, Jermaine, hmm. and thank you, young man, for coming over and, and, and recording this for for us. Okay, mm -hmm. so as we come to a close here, I just want to share a a check yak here. Give us a closing, closing prayer to this as we close. So.